The Bible reports that Jesus, along with his mother, attended a local wedding ceremony. In fact, his first miracle, when he turned water into wine, was for the purpose of making sure a marriage ceremony went as planned. So, Jesus was in no doubt a full advocate of marriage between a man and a woman. But, why then did Jesus refuse to marry? Or did he? If he did, then to whom was Jesus married? In this episode, we are going to explore these questions that have weighed and still weighed on the minds of many believers. In the four Gospels, there is ample evidence that Jesus was fully lived his humanity. For example, he was born to a human mother. He experienced hunger and thirst. Jesus also experienced temptation, pain and suffering, and then he died. What is missing from this list is one of the most sacred human experience, marriage. The Bible is silent on the marriage status of Jesus, or is it? This episode will attempt to answer three questions. One, was Jesus married? Two, if yes, to whom? Three, if no, why not? Let's start with number one. Scholars have debated this very question for a long time. There are those who strongly believe that Jesus must have been married. As you will see in a second, their reasoning is very logical. But as you listen and watch, you must keep an open mind, remembering that logic is not the same as true. Here are the reasons scholars believe Jesus was married. 1. Cultural Context In the first century Jewish culture and during the period Jesus lived on earth, it was common and expected for Jewish men to be married. Given that Jesus was a practicing Jew, some scholars argue that it would have been unusual for him to remain unmarried according to the social norms of the time. 2. Gnostic Gospels I mentioned earlier that the Bible is silent on the marital status of Jesus. However, this constitution did not include all existing scriptures at the time. In fact, many documents that addressed the life of Christ on earth were deliberately omitted from the constituted Bible. Not only that, such documents were banned, burned, destroyed, and anyone found with them were severely punished. As you would expect, many early followers of Christ disagreed with the omissions. They resorted to hiding the documents in caves and other such places, passing it around from generation to generation. As a result, many of the documents were lost until recently. In the last few decades, many of these documents have been, mostly by accident, found and dug up from caves and other underground hiding places. Some of the non-canonical Gnostic texts include the Gospel of Philip, which allude to a close relationship between Jesus and one of his close female disciples. I will reveal the name of the disciple in a moment, but keep in mind, like the canonical Gospels, the Gnostic Gospels were written many years sometimes centuries after the death of Christ. 3. Preaching in the Synagogue The Bible reports that Jesus preached in the synagogue. Many scholars said this was evidence that Jesus was married. They argued that only men of status were allowed to preach in the synagogue and that one way of gaining status is through marriage. It is important to note that while this argument sound logical, but during the time of Jesus, there is no historical evidence or explicit requirement that preaching in a synagogue necessitated that the person be married. Synagogues were Jewish places of worship, study, and community gathering, and they played a significant role in the religious and social life of Jewish communities during that time. 4. Celibacy Not Mandated Unlike certain Christian traditions that emphasize celibacy, Early Christianity did not universally require its leaders to be celibate. Some scholars argue that if Jesus intended to establish a new religious movement, being married would have been in line with the cultural norms of the time. 5. Historical Reconstructions Some scholars propose that the canonical Gospels might have omitted details about Jesus' personal life, including his marital status, in order to focus on his theological teachings and mission. They suggest that as the Gospels were written decades after Jesus' death, 
certain aspects of his life might have been overlooked or downplayed. For example, the Gospel of Mark is believed to have been written first, likely around 6570 AD. The Gospel of Matthew was likely composed between 70 and 85 AD. This Gospel is often seen as being influenced by the Gospel of Mark and other sources. The Gospel of Luke is generally dated between 80 and 90 AD. Like Matthew, Luke also drew upon the Gospel of Mark and other traditions while composing his Gospel. The Gospel of John is thought to have been written last, likely around 90-100 AD or even later. Because of the passage of time between Jesus' death and the writing of these Gospels, some scholars argue that certain details about Jesus' life, especially those not germane to his ministry, may have been omitted. Well, as you can see, the reasons advanced for the argument that Jesus was married are very logical. Let's look at the disciple who they claim Jesus was married to. Again, while the canonical gospel did not corroborate this, the Gospel of Philip mentions Mary Magdalene as the female disciple with whom Jesus had a close relationship. This closeness is clear from reading the four canonical Gospels. In Mary Magdalene is regarded as the Apostle of Apostles, as she was the first to see Jesus after resurrection and instructed to go tell the others. The Gospel of Philip records that the Apostles witnessed Jesus kissing Mary Magdalene on the mouth. But this should not be taken literarily. The Hebrew word for kiss is nashak. It was a common cultural practice that means to commune. The Gospel also referred to Mary as Jesus' companion. Again, this is a Greek word meaning someone with a shared goal, not necessarily a spouse or partner. In another non-canonical text, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, the Apostles noted that Jesus loved Mary more than other women. Again, the wording is interesting, but it does not necessitate or even strongly suggest a marriage relationship. Or does it? Now is time to answer question number two. In spite of the logical argument presented so far, is it conclusive that Jesus was married to Mary Magdalene? The answer is no, and the reason is simple. It is not stated in a canonical gospel that Jesus was married or that he was married to Mary Magdalene. As a Christian, I believe the canonical gospel is accurate and represents the true scriptures. If it were the case that Jesus was married, it would have been stated in the Bible. Marriage is so important to Christianity that it is inconceivable that such an important aspect of Jesus' life would have been mistakenly omitted by the many writers of the Bible. Some would argue that it might have been a deliberate omission. To that I ask, to what end? The Bible records many embarrassing instances. It does not make sense that the marriage of Christ would be deliberately omitted, especially when Christ himself fully supported. In Matthew chapter 19, Jesus said, have you not read that he who made them in the first place made them man and woman? It says, For this reason a man will leave his father and his mother and will live with his wife. The two will become one. So they are no longer two, but one. Let no man divide what God has put together. This brings us to the last question. If Jesus was not married, why not? It is true that being married would not necessarily have negated the deity or perfection of Jesus since marriage is not a sin and is ordained by God. However, there would have been significant implications. 1. If Jesus married, that would mean he chose one woman on earth to elevate and love over all others. This would be an interesting theological predicament. It would have been misinterpreted to show that God loves different people to different degrees. 2. The Church is the spiritual bride of Jesus. So, it would have been confusing reconciling Jesus, having an earthly bride with his spiritual bride. The metaphor of the Church, the Bride of Christ, would no longer make sense. 3. If Jesus was married, he probably would have had children. How would this have affected the claim that through Christ we are children of God? John 1.12 4. In marriage, husband and wife become one flesh. If sinless Jesus married sinful woman because all have sinned and became one flesh with her, would he then be tainted with sin? Thanks for watching. Do not forget to subscribe, like and share this video. Check out my channel for more videos discussing mysteries of the Bible.
Bye for now.